Yes, yes. So here, when you talk about the institution, institutions are the established patterns of behavior in society. So there are five major institutions in society. They are the family, the economy, the polity, the education, and the religion. These are the major institution, whichever society you go, wherever, whether the society is bigger or smaller, these primary institutions will be always there in society. So if you want to know sociology, if you want to know the changes, if you want to understand the problems that are existing in the society, there is, there is a linkage between all these institutions. For example, family is dependent upon economy, economy is further dependent upon polity, polity is further dependent upon education, education is further dependent upon religions. All Are you able to see the slide, children? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah. So uh, tell me, what are the institutions? What are the institutions? They are the established patterns of behavior in society. You have to remember this point. The family, it's an established pattern. The polity, the politics is an established pattern. Religion, it's an established pattern. Any changes that are taking place in the institutions of family. For example, institution of family in the traditional society was a joint family. Because the changes mm -hmm. that are taking place in society, it has got disintegrated into nuclear family and further different types of families have emerged. Okay, educational system. Educational system, traditional educational system was something like family was a primary aspect where education Okay. Okay. So institutions, primary institutions, family. Can you please tell me? Can anybody repeat? Family, uh, economy, uh, hmm? quality, uh, education, hmm? the religion. 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 These are the primary institutions. Yes. People are muting me. Again and again, they are muting me. Fine. Okay. So there is an inter. I see any changes, you know, any change. For example, if we talk about the, what is the relationship between family and uh, uh, education or family and uh, economy. For example, if you look at the uh, family and uh, uh, socialization of the children. See, for example, family takes care of the socialization of children. Children are taken care by the members of the family. Education children, children have been taken care by the family members. But later in the modern society, the role of family members have been taken up by the various educational institutions. We have this primary education, we have the secondary education, we have this higher education, we have this, you know, baby care centers, we have this crutch who are taking care of the role of the family, taking up, taking up, taking up the role of the families in the modern society. So any changes, if you want to relate, you can look into these four uh, these five primary institutions, I can you can relate with each other. Like you know, you can talk about what was a family in the traditional society, what was a family in the ancient period, what was the family today in today in the modern society, what is the condition, what is the type of the families existing. So what are the conditions prevailing in the present society? So all this talks about the family as an institution. Okay, so this are the uh, this um, somebody is you're viewing Radhika's screen. Radhika, you please shut down your screen, please. Yeah. Fine. So, uh, so, talking about the other things, what are the values? Institutions, as I said, establish patterns of behavior in society. What are the values? See, we talk about values. Values are nothing but abstract guidelines. What are values? Values are nothing but abstract guidelines given to the individual, abstract guidelines for behavior of the individuals in the society. Okay, what are the values? Abstract guidelines for behavior, okay, which one which are related to the individuals or the groups. So these are the abstract guidelines for behaviors, which one refers to the individual or to the groups in a society. 
So these are the abstract guidelines. Values are the abstract guidelines. Like you know, you want to be truth. You want to be honest. Honesty is an abstract guidelines. For example, you happen to see any elder person in your in your family. You just say namaste or you touch their feet. These are the abstract guidelines you follow in your life. Why you are asking me to start my video? Fine. Is it clear? So the values are nothing but the abstract guidelines for behavior, which are being given to the individuals, which are being given to the group. They have to follow. For example, if you talk about traffic rules, traffic rules are the traffic rules or traffic uh, rules are something which are values you follow in your life. You know, if you're on the road, you're, 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 you're commuting on the road, you follow certain traffic rules. So those are nothing but the values. Secondly, we can talk about the norms. What are norms? Norms are nothing but the actual behavior. I don't understand why this is being doing. What are norms? Norms are nothing but the actual behavior. Actual behavior. As I said you, the traffic rule. Okay? Traffic rule is a value. Okay? So stopping at a traffic. When a signal comes, if you have a red signal, you stop. So stopping at the traffic, it is considered as an actual behavior. So you're following the actual ah. what is page number hello what is page number ma'am page number yes ma'am there is no page number child i'm not using any page number here okay i'm just generally speaking about what is sociology what the social what society consists of social society consists of social structure Social structure consists of institutions, norms, and values. I'm talking about that generally. So the second unit this lecture is not uh, is not part of any unit in the book here, or it is second unit. Of... It is second unit. We don't see this on second unit. Huh? It is there in the second unit. If you want me to talk about the first unit part, I'll talk about the first unit as well. But it was been not said to me. If you want me to talk about the nature and scope of sociology, I'll talk about that. I'm yeah, coming because, to that point. Yeah, because this is the very first uh, class that we are class. attending. Fine. So fine, we are not fine. sure what we have been told, but yeah, we haven't yeah. been a part of the first. There was no lecture given for the first unit. Fine, fine, fine. So just is, this is again a basic thing I'm talking about because in fact, I want to talk about the social structure but I'm just talking about what does society consist of? Society consists of a social structure. And you have to remember that there are primary institutions, five primary institutions in society where sociology deals with it. And there are values, which are abstract guidelines for behavior that are given to the individuals and the norms, which are the actual behavior that the individual follows. Okay, these are the this general aspect, general, the beginning of the class. I'm just talking about what sociology is all about. And what the sociology studies, social studies of a society, and what does society consist of? Are you getting me? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma this is second unit. Yes, remember, this. these are the basic things you have to, you, you should, you, you are supposed to understand what is exactly society is all about. So, society consists yes, of a social structure, values, norms, and institutions. Yes. Okay. If you, if, if you want me to start with the beginning of the class, like you know, if you want to talk about the scope, nature, and scope of sociology. Uh, then I will start with nature and scope of sociology with your first unit. Do you want me to start yes, with that? Start with yes, yes, yes please start the first unit. Yeah. Yeah. So the first unit yes, talks about, start you know, the I'll start unit, with the, the nature and scope of sociology and its relationship with other social sciences. But I don't think uh, the relationship of social sciences is possible now, but I can just start with the nature and scope of sociology. If you want me to start with it, I'll start with it. Okay? Thank you very much. Yeah. So basically, in, initially, you have to just remember that sociology is a science, systematic and scientific study of society. You just remember this point: the sociology is a systematic and scientific study of society. Uh, you have to remember this point. You don't forget. Don't ever forget about that. Generally, you know, various thinkers have said about different points. I mean, to, spoken about society, sociology. They have given their own point of views with regard to the definition of sociology. Some thinkers say that social study of social facts. Uh, one of the thinkers like Max Weber says that social study of social action, the interpretative understanding of social action. So various thinkers have given various definitions related to sociology. But uh, one definition you need to remember is what exactly sociology is all about. The sociology is a study of society. It's a systematic and scientific 
study of society because i'm telling here it is a science of society so as given by as said by uh, august com the father of sociology he says that sociology is something it is a science of society it is, so it is something which is superior than any other uh, sciences like social any social any sciences natural sciences like physics chemistry mathematics or uh, a biology or uh, any any subject any any natural sciences sociology is superior than those subjects why because is why he says that because he says that sociology is a subject which deals with the individuals it deals with the people okay so people are the major uh, um, what you can say people are the major focal point of study of sociology and as i said in the beginning of the class i said you that Uh, for a society to form there should be some kind of an action taking place between the individual once the action is taking place action further gives rise to formation of relationship relationship uh, action gives rise to interaction so once the action starts action gives rise to interaction interaction gives rise to relationships really further relationship gives rise to formation of groups and all groups put together gives rise to society so in this particular slide i said that when i talk about society society consists of a social structure and social structure consists of institutions values and norms so keeping in view the definition of sociology like sociology is a science of society it is something which is again you know everywhere there is sociology wherever you are like we are you are uh, you part of any society uh, you, you are among a group in your family wherever you go at the bus stop you everywhere there is because you are interacting with the people you are with the people and that is all about the uh, definition of sociology is all about can you did you get it did you yes, get this point anything yes, anything further you want about this no yeah no ma'am so this yeah. is this is the definition of sociology so you have to, in fact you know i don't know whether you have received the material uh, with regard to this paper or not but uh, if you don't have the book with related to sociology uh, material if you don't have you can refer one book called as c n shankar rao principles of sociology is a book book in the market you can you can go and purchase this book from the market okay. c n shankar rao c n shankar rao principles of sociology what is c n shankar rao principles of sociology you can purchase this book from the market got it this is a model paper ma'am it is not a model it is a textbook um, principle of principles of sociology okay shall i shall i continue yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma see ha ah, okay so before going into the nature of sociology i just want to put a word to you again see how this sociology as a subject got emerged as you all know that sociology is a very young science you know before sociology there were earlier other subject existing like economics political science they are the very age old history these are the very age old sciences that were existing before sociology was emerged and in the middle of the 19th century if you talk about sociology become recognized as a distinct social science and uh, there are various factors we can contribute to the please kindly mute na students kindly mute i request everybody to mute mute all and mute everybody so much of disturbance fine mm. yeah so um, there were there are, there are three major factors that can be uh, uh, considered for the emergence of subject of sociology as such you know before sociology Uh, emerged or or uh, came into existence they were everything was in the form of philosophy philosophical discourse was happening people were talking in a philosophical terms you know people were individually dealing with the problems that were existing in the society but after uh, industrial revolution and french revolution um, there was a need of a, a subject called as sociology uh, uh, where you know which this particular subject would deal with every aspect of the problems that were uh emerging out of the french revolution and industrial revolution so in the second half of the 18th century when in you know, western europe underwent a, a, a significant change a significant transformation uh, the changes agitated some people's mind and made them actually aware of what was going on around them 
And to begin with the Industrial Revolution, which actually began in England in the late 18th century, uh, or a French Revolution, if you talk about, was uh, something which was monumental, which was very big, and which was very bigger event. And there was a massive shift in the society. There was modern, society was transforming. There was a kind of, a, a kind we can say, renaissance period, we can say, or there was an enlightenment period, we can say, uh, like, you know, people were, uh, uh, there was you know, revolutions, we can say, people were being, you know, uh, uh, power was coming in the hands of the masses. So there was a massive shift in society. And uh, the industrial revolution not only uh, revolutionized the production method, because it also uh, uh, brought about the significant social changes in the society because as it as i tell you yeah, in the estate system was existing in the european country uh, like estate in the sense you know there were the four estates like we talk about the first state state talks about the nobles we have the clergymen we have the feudals and the commoners this was the hierarchical system existed in the uh, european country okay but there was a kind of shift. There was like, you know, uh, people want to throw away the monarchy. Uh, there was a revolution. The masses were so fed up with the dominance of the monarch and their, their dominance. Everything was in the hands of the monarch. They, should, they were the deciding factors. And there was a, they, it paved, when people revolution, it paved way for enlightenment. You know, people started reasoning everything. So it was a kind of a, a, a kind of a complete change was experienced after industrial revolution. The power well, came into the hands of the masses. You know, they overthrew the monarchy, and the and the people started. Uh, they overthrew the feudal system, and the power came into the hands of the masses. The people, everybody had the scope for thinking and uh, contributing for the development of society. So there was a, after industrial revolution, there was complex urban life and mass production of goods. Uh, which were replaced into simple rural life and a small scale home industry. When I say industrial revolution, people came out of the clutches of the feudal lords and they started moving because when they when they when they overthrew the feudalism, they were they were like moving towards industries. Okay, so small they, it paired way for small scale home industries. Civilization changed course as you know a result of industrialization. So what happened in these fast growing cities? Uh, social problems became rampant. So when people started moving towards industries and they started working in industries and that again gave rise to various social problems like problems like uh, problems of women, problems of sanitation, problems of uh, children, problems related to health. So, so many problems, uh, it, uh, you know, it paved way because of industrialization. So in the fast growing cities towards uh, in the industrialization towards the industries or near the industries, social problems became rampant. Okay, so people were confronted with the problem they, that, that neither they nor their forefathers have ever faced before because of industrialization. So men's people were like, you know, um, stayed by the challenges of the industrialization and they began to consider how to get rid of the social ills or social problems that, you know, that uh, gave, that, that arose because of industrial revolution. So there were social thinkers like August Comte, who is the father of the sociology, and Herbert Spencer, and they argued that there should be, uh, before that, there were uh, social contract thinkers like Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, Rousseau, Aristotle, Plato, all these thinkers were, for philosophers were existing, were talking in, talking about the society, deciding about the, uh, the things that were existing in society. But later, because of industrial revolution, the thinkers like Com Hubbard, August Comte, Hubbard Spencer argued that there should be a separate science of society which would deal with the social problems which are the outcome of industrialization. And they believed that such a science would be extremely uh, beneficial in understanding society's nature, the problems that are existing in society, as well as finding solutions to these social problems. So getting my point. So it was felt by the thinkers that apart from economics, apart from political science, apart from history or um, uh, any other social science, there should be one more subject called, one more discipline called sociology is required, wherein it would understand the existing social problems, which are the outcome of industrialization, 
and will also suggest or give solutions to these problems. Okay, so this is that was again the need was felt for one more subject to develop that is called that sociology. And there's a reason I could say that sociology is a very young social sciences compared to other social sciences. So it's a general science we can say. So before going into the nature of sociology, I would like to put some more points over here that, you know, the natural sciences, as you all know, advanced significantly during the 19th century. And uh, the natural sciences achievements inspired and even cite a number of social thinkers to follow in this. But we talk about Newton's law, we talk about various social scientists, we talk about Galileo, so many thinkers, social scientists are there. So people began to wonder like if the methods which had been used by natural sciences could be also applied to the social world. So uh, to understand the social phenomena, um, okay. So August Combe, who is himself a social physicist or social statistics, uh, uh, August Combe, along with other thinkers, they have he had demonstrated a scientific method which could also be used to study the social world in response to the various questions arise out of social problems. So in addition, we can say that the European colonial rule were exposed to a variety of societies and cultures in the colonial empires. And the social scientists at that time um, uh, uh, faced and in challenges, you know, as a result of their exposure to the wide range of societies and cultures. So as a result, what happened, both intellectual and social factors influenced the development of sociology as a distinct discipline. So there was a need was felt that there should be one particular subject one particular dis so, so, uh, discipline, which will be studying about the wide ranges of societies, and the wide ranges of cultures that are part of this modern societies, which are the result of uh, industrial revolution and French revolution. Did you get my point here, students? Yes, we do. Yes, this, this is the actual reason why sociology discipline has emerged. Got it? So you can see, uh, I can also put in a nutshell over here, like, you know, sociology is a subject, you know, um, we can say it is an embodiment, we can say it is a result of commercial revolution, further embodied or embedded in industrial revolution, further crystallized into French revolution or scientific revolution, we can say. So this is again, uh, commercial revolution, further giving rise to French revolution, French revolution, further giving rise to industrial revolution. So these are the various things. It's again, modern society. I'm just talking about the modern society. What is the result of modern society? The modern society is the result of commercial revolution, further crystallized into uh, French revolution, is further crystallized into um, industrial revolution. So that is how, again, giving rise to the modern societies. So this is the reason, like, you know, it was felt by the thinkers that there should be a distinct discipline like sociology, which would study about the social issues, about the variety, the different societies, about the different culture, and also to give various solutions to the social problems that are the outcome of industrial revolution or industrialization. Is that clear? Yes, it is, ma'am. Yeah, fine. Now, what is the nature of sociology? I'm just going into subject now, so which which I which I haven't. Uh, I wasn't uh, ready to, but I want to, in fact, talk about this. When you look at the slide over here, I'm going to talk about what is social structure and what is, uh, uh, what are the status, what are the values, and we'll talk about this. But uh, just uh, next class, if I get a chance, I'll talk about all these slides. But generally speaking, today I'll just talk, speak about uh, what exactly you want We talk about that. So nature of sociology. See, Sociology, as I said to you, is a science of society. It is a science, I'm, a, I'm using a term over here, science. So sociology is a systematic and scientific study of society. So like any other sciences, it also studied about society in a systematic, in a scientific way. So whatever methods that are employed by the natural sciences, like experimentations or observations or comparison or all these things, methods, all these methods of natural science are also employed in the study of society by the sociologists. Okay, so sociology attempts to conduct a scientific investigation into social action or events. You have to remember this sentence as well. That what is that? Social 
sociology attempts to conduct a scientific investigation into social action or events so uh, so you know, in this particular when I, when i use a word scientific you know it must be like you must be thinking that why scientific word uh, or why scientific study to understand the social action or events see when i am using a term scientific study see scientific study is one that attempt to understand a phenomena in a systematic in a logical manner when i say scientific logical scientific study means in a logical manner see i just cannot ask you uh, do you have children without asking whether are you married so this is something you know in a systematic in a logical manner whenever we want to study a social phenomena a social thing so a scientific study when you talk about scientific study a scientific study consist of fact is based upon facts and the researcher's subjective feelings must not be a factor in the study so so my subjective feelings i love you so much you know i like my society i am a woman so i like only women so my subjective feeling should not come into the process of investigation society so of investigation such problems in society so we have to understand so when i say scientific scientific talks about the facts they talk about the realities they are talk about the objective realities they things should be objective in nature so the facts must be like they have to be analyzed they has to be interpreted they have to be like you know uh, come to generalization so in relation to the phenomena which is under investigation any any situation which is under investigation you should provide certain kinds of conclusions or generalization which must be empirically verifiable reliable and valid so whatever information i am giving about any phenomena or any problem it should be empirically verifiable when i say empirical empirical is a term which talks about the investigation done by the data which is collected directly from the field that is it's called as empirical studies okay so we have to empirically verify suppose if i say child of child labor is prevalent in india and there are 80% children are, are into child labor then i have to verify that fact 80% when i am using a term 80% so how that is viable how it is whether it is right or not so i have to verify that data i have to collect the facts from the field if i say india may 78% people are literate So what sorts? What how I know that seventy eight percent people are literacy is there, or only sixty six sixty six percent sixty five percent women are literate, and still forty percent women are not literate. What are the facts? I am going to that should be empirically verified. That should be reliable. You should you should because if I say the sex ratio in our country has increased by two thousand twenty one, what is the sex ratio in two thousand eleven? It was nine forty one per thousand. Now it has increased to one thousand four two thousand. So that facts, how do I get it? They should be reliable. and what and it should be valid valid information okay so so sociology is concerned with people and the values that they hold the methods used in sociology uh, differ slightly from the methods that are used by other social sciences for example you know non living particles are subject matter of natural sciences such as physics and chemistry so these particles do not have their own consciousness by a kind information however as i said the sociology subject matter is human beings the people are the sociology in the society the society consists of people so the subject matter of sociology is human being who are well aware they have a self awareness you know who have you know, who tend to act differently uh, you know who, who behave in different manner the behavior is not the same always it is like it is different so what i mean to say is that people behave differently they are different uh, in different situations okay so the subject matter of sociology is human being and human beings cannot be studied in a laboratory like any other uh, sciences study about their products about their particles or about their uh, cells or anything like that so they are not, they are studied in a laboratory then the human beings cannot be studied in a laboratory but, but you know uh, sociologists have to study about the human in a natural environment in order to understand their true nature so what is the laboratory of a sociologist what is the laboratory of a sociologist i guess it's the field and huh? the society 
a society. Just a field and a society. society. So society is a laboratory for the sociology. So because they have to study the human beings, the social condition, in the conditions in which they are. If I want to talk about, I want to study about the problem of uh, prostitution. If I want to talk about the problem of poverty or issues related to illiteracy, issues related to unemployment, so I have to go to the field. We have to interact with the people. So, okay. So, however, we look at, you know, all sciences have one thing in common, that is observation should be done in a very scientific manner. And this means that an observer must be accurately record what he or she looks at or sees at. So observation is nothing but viewing things with a purpose. So whenever I am viewing the students of B.R. Ambedkar Open University, I have to observe them with a purpose. What is the purpose of their people? the students taking up distant education. So observation means viewing things with a purpose. So in sciences also, they you view things with a purpose. Similarly, sociologists also view the phenomena or the people with a purpose. So what is happening over here? A sociologist will be, should be able to keep his or own preconceived notions or their own biases aside. Okay, for example, if I say I love my country very much, India is a India is a India is you know better than any other countries, and I should keep this view of my country beside when I'm comparing my country with other countries. So, what are the loopholes of my country? What are the problems that are existing in our country? So, I should compare it with other countries. So, for example, you know, a researcher may have a co uh, as I said, you know, about, about my own country, you know, he should what I feel about my own gender, what I feel about my own country, that biases should be kept kept aside. So you should be like something talking about, you know, more in a scientific way, in a systematic way, in an unbiased way, in an objective way. Okay, so as said, uh, one person called as Robert Bystert in his book, Social Order, he says that sociology is a distinct field of study distinct field of study, like it is a distinct field of study of society exclusively. Sociology is a social science and not a science of matter because subject matter of sociology is human beings. So sociology is not a natural science, it's a social science. Social Sociology, so this could be the nature of sociology. Just understand this. I'm mean, telling you seven points over here. So sociology is a distinct field of society, study of society. Sociology is a social science and not a science of matter. Sociology is a categorical discipline and not a normative one because it is categorical. It can be categorized. It has to be like, you know, um, it, uh, categorized and the various subjects have been, been categorized in sociology. So the categorical science, so it is not a, this, uh, um, what you can say, what I said you, it's not a, um, what, what is the word I use in normative science? Sociology is a pure science, not a practical one. So it is pure, it cannot be an applied science, I can say, there is no application. So sociology is pure in itself. Sociology is abstract science. The things that are existing in society are abstract in nature. The sociology is an abstract science. It is not a concrete science, we can say. Sociology is a general science, not a specific or individual one. So it is a general science which takes into account everything that is related to the individuals, other humans in a society. And sociology is science, which is both empirical and rational. Okay, so I can just put it in a, uh, if you want me to die, if you want to note down these points, you can just note down the nature of sociology. Seven points you can add it over here. That sociology is distinct field of science of society, distinct study of society, a field of study of society. Sociology is a social science and not a science, natural science and not a science of matter. Sociology is a categorical science, not a normative one. Sociology is a pure science, not a practical one. Sociology is relatively abstract science, not an concrete science. Sociology is general science, not a specific or individual one. Sociology is science that is both rational and empirical. Okay, when I say rational, it is logical. It talks about truth. Empirical means that which is collected directly from the field. Is it clear? Yes, Anything you could please ask me here. I just go to scope. Fast, fast. I went very yeah. fast now. Uh. Anything you want to ask, child? Anything you want to ask? Tell me. Madam, can you please explain slowly, ma'am? I will explain slowly. There is no time. Yeah, you want me to, you want to ask anything to me? Please ask me. 
मैम विल यू गिव नोट्स विल आई गिव नोट्स टू यू यस मैम यस मैम आई विल गिव आई विल गिव नोट्स नो डाउट यस मैम इट्स बेटर फॉर अस yeah so what you can do is you can take my number you can take my phone number you can contact me directly okay ma'am so tell me the important questions come the i will tell you important questions as well so i put my phone number here you can contact me for this theek okay? hai okay ma'am yeah now let us let me speak about the scope did you get about the definition of sociology yeah ma'am did you get about the nature of sociology Yes, ma'am. Got it, na? Thora idea to aaya na ap logo ko. Did you get the idea about the socialist subject? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. Now I'll talk about the scope. Okay, before talking anything, I'll talk about the scope. You will understand the scope of sociology. Okay. okay. Shall I? Shall I go? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. See. Ah, tell me. Yes, ma'am. Shall I go with the scope? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, as I said, you the know, sociology have been interested in man and the dynamics of society uh, since the discipline. Because, because, because the subject matter of sociology is human, so you should not tell me like whether I can say scope of sociology is wider or narrow. Uh, because you know, when I talk about the scope of sociology, there are school two schools of thought. Okay, two schools of thought. One, I'll just put it in the slide. Are you able to see the slide? Can't. Mm. Are you able to see the slide? No, ma'am. Your video is on, so we don't see the slide. You're not able to see the slide. Ah, just one second. I'll share the slide over here. Because the material is not because whatever material I prepared for today's class, it is not been shown. So I'm just add some points over here. So okay. scope of sociology. I'll just put the last slide over here. Can't. Yeah. Mm. Are you able to see the slide now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I'll yes, add one slide over here. See, the scope of sociology uh, <laughs> can be understood from two point of view. Scope of sociology. The scope of sociology. Sorry. Two school of thought. One is formalistic school. Formalistic school of thought, and another one is synthetic school. synthetic synthetic school school of thought okay so these two thoughts school of thoughts are there like you know they have given the different views with regard to the scope of sociology okay formalist school of thought says that the scope of sociology is narrow but a synthetic school of so sociology says says that the scope of sociology is wider so there is a kind of uh, uh, argument uh, taking place between the uh, for the scope of sociology as such okay so okay so when i say uh, scope of sociology the uh, sociology major concern is sociological analysis so it means that you know sociological uh, sociologist attempts to provide a sociologic analysis of human society and culture so the primary unit study uh, the study of primary unit of social life um, has received sufficient attention in sociology so wherein the the more of more of concern a concentration is on social acts social relationship diverse groups various commun different types of communities maybe it is urban rural tribal or uh, talk about associations organization and the vast population so sociology has studied the evolution structure and functions of wide range of basic social institutions like family as i said you family uh marriage uh, family economy polity education religion it talks about the values it talks about the norms it talks about the every aspects that are existing in society so what happens is the task of sociology becomes very very wider according to the synthetic school what this uh, formalist school of thinker says that sociology should only talk about the forms of relationship and not the content of relationship i'll put it over here in the slide what they say forms of relationship forms and content so what the so this particular school of thinker says that that sociology should only should concern itself or only study about the forms of relationship 
The forms of relationships are like cooperation, competition, accommodation, assimilation, conflict. All these are the forms of relationship. So they say don't want to uh, probe into the content of the relationship. For example, you know, they have given an example. I can use an example of a uh, shape of a water bottle. Shape of a water bottle can be the form of a water bottle. Shapes are the form. Like, you know, it may be spherical, it may be rectangular, it may be square, it may be you know, like, uh, whatever. The shape of the water bottle will be anything. So the yeah. content may be water, milk or anything like that. You know, whatever you put into the bottle, this is the content. So here, the, um, this particular school of thought says that the sociologists will only focus upon the form of relationship. They should not bother about the content of the relationship, how the competition is taking place in economic field or how the competition is taking place in the political field, how the competition is taking place in the education no, no. field. He says that, what do you mean by competition? You only concentrate upon that. Don't bother about the kind of the content of competition, how it is been experienced in the economic field, how it has been experienced in the political field, or how it has been experienced in the other fields. So they don't want to, uh, 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 they're not at all interested in the content of the relationship. But whereas the synthetic school of thinkers, they say that the forms and content of relationship both are uh, equally important. Farms be zaruri hai, understanding ke liye, even the content. If economic field mein what kind of competition taking place, among whom the competition is taking place, what kind of changes that is going to bring in the society, what kind of impact that is going to bring on the society, or what are the social problems that are going to be put in the society, and what are the uh, various solutions we can give because of the, the conflict or competition. So this is the various concerns being projected by the uh, uh, synthetic school of thought. So synthetic school of thought thinker says that so the, the scope of sociology is very wider, whereas the formalistic school or the specialist school thinker think that the scope of sociology is narrow, narrower. So there is a contradiction. So Emile Durkheim, thinkers like Emile Durkheim have propounded for or proposed for the synthetic school of uh, uh, thought and uh, Max Weber and some thinkers come under the uh, formalist school of thought. So there is uh, uh, lots and lots of contradiction, but as far as I'm concerned, um, we, we always say that scope of sociology is very wider because it looks into every aspect of the things that are existing in society. Why? Because the scope and subject matter of each subject are distinct. And the scope of sociology is a point of contention about among sociology. As a result, you know, there is no consensus among the scholars regarding the scope of sociology. So some sociology, as I said, you that studies everything. Sociology studies everything and anything under the sun. Okay. Okay. While others believe that sociology scope is very limited because only studies think that other social do not. Okay. So it is limited. Because sociology is such an ephemeral science, it's difficult to determine whether it's Bond is begin, where is bond is begin and end. Where sociology becomes the psychology, social psychology. You know, there's one sociology may social such subject which is studied by everybody. Like, you know, sociology, there's one paper called a social psychology. So when sociology becomes social psychology, and when and social psychology becomes sociology, or when economic theories become sociological theories, or sometimes it is impossible to decide. Okay. So, but that's the reason I say you that sociology, there's one political sociology is also one subject. So it's sociology also merging into politics. So everywhere there is a need to understand, uh, there is a relationship between uh, sociology and other social sciences. So there is need of sociology is felt everywhere. So uh, there is an attempt has been you know made to understand the scope of sociology. Like I said, you formalistic school and synthetic school, uh, this school of thought, you know, the people, those who, uh, the main proponents of this formalist school are, as I said, Max Weber was one person. There is George Simmel, uh, Frederick Tonis. They, they are the proponents of the formalist school. And as I said, synthetic school was given by Emile Durkheim, uh, Pitrim Soraki, Thomas Hobbes. Okay, all these are the people, you know, uh, L.T. Hobbes, you know, these people are the proponents of the synthetic school. So, um, so uh, did you understand? Did you understand this aspect? Students, scope of sociology. Yes, ma'am. So yes, here, ma when, when, as Durkheim says, you know, sociology, why it is in wider scope? Because uh, it talks about social morphology, it talks about social physiology, it talks about general social, social problems. 
so everything is been studied uh, in sociology every aspect you know as i say social morphology and social physiology and general sociology the geographical or territorial basis of people's lives such as population population size density and distribution is addressed by social morphology and the study of the origins and nature of social institutions such as religion morals laws values economic institutions is known as physiology social physiology and the main goal of general sociology is you know to formulate general social laws okay that is coming under general sociology So this is the viewpoint of Emile Durkheim, who is also the founding father of sociology. Tells that the scope of sociology is wider. Okay, so there is one more thinker called as you know uh, Karl Mannheim. Karl Mannheim is a proponent of sociology on a subject. He says that he has divided sociology into systematic and general. Why discussion is going on? Long ago, Dalada. Hmm. I'm muting everybody. Yeah, fine. So, so it has been said that you know, like people, uh, Karl Mannheim talks about two sections of it: systematic and general sociology and historical sociology. So it is he has divided. So any kind of society, systematic sociology describes the main factors of living. Uh, together one by one, and historical sociology is concerned with the historical diversities and realities of how society was in the past, how the society is now. But there can be a, a comparative study can be done when talking about society as such. So there are two viewpoints given by the scope in, under the scope of sociology under the two school of thought that is the synthetic school of thought and the formalist school of thought. Now you have to decide whether you want to say sociology as a wider scope. or a narrower scope or or a um, limited scope it is up to you to decide not to decide but as far as i understand i can conclude that you know sociology subject matter is social life as a whole so it it and it deals with the more general principles and you know that uh, uh, actually looks into the social phenomena so as i understand the scope of sociology is very wide it is very broad so it is a general as well as a specialized science okay is it okay yes ma'am yeah. yes ma'am yes, ma this is yes, ma see in a in a question you, you will be getting a question like define sociology discuss is nature and scope this is the one important question you have to always you start preparing this answer now what is sociology discuss its nature and scope okay You, this is a it is a common this is this is the uh, all time all people are we will ask this question every time like you know nature and scope you should be thorough with this answer mm -hmm. okay yes ma'am i think the class time is over what should i do but i'll talk about it. i will just close before uh, i will close by giving the importance of sociology should i do that are you ready to listen yes sure yes sure just some points importance of sociology yes. like okay see okay. the value of sociology as a subject is increasing all the time you know every time the society may because society is moving from simpler to complex so it is giving rise to various social issues and social problems and the role of sociologists and sociologists becoming very very important and prominent because you know individual social life and society are constantly changing and sociology is a discipline that helps people understand their daily lives and how they are changing okay so the study of social problems and making adjustment to society is a fundamental aspect of sociology okay so that is how we can say that sociology has a uh, you know uh, a thing a uh, you know, monumental uh, or we can say an important uh, thing to do in the people lives and their you know um, in the in social issues that are the part of the society as well so when i say some sociological investigation have a uh, simplicity and obviousness to them like you know one reads them or not said the familiar seed or things to themselves so when you talk about the social issues which is again the major concern of sociology it is being felt more fascinating sociology is fascinating because it teaches people how to recognize their place in the world and how others see them so looking at themselves and society from a sociological standpoint allows people to see how they fit into 
various groups based on the various scale they classify themselves and how society classifies them. So when I say economy, economy is a subject which only talks about the economy as an economic animal, an economic condition of a human being. But sociology is not like that. It takes into the economic condition, it takes into the consideration of political aspect, it takes into the consideration of the religious aspect of human being. So man is part of all the institutions that are existing in the society. So man is, because he's a part of all the institutions of society, the sociology studies man as a whole. Okay, so it raises awareness on the impact of classifications like economy and social status, education and social status, education and social change, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or perception, etc., etc. So, so people are taught in sociology not to accept simple experience because we are not commoners and we are not laymen. Okay, everybody knows everything about society. I say for I say for everybody else. But it teaches them how to organize their thoughts so they can ask better questions, logical questions, factual questions, real questions. It make people makes it makes people more aware of the fact that there are many different types of people in the world who do not necessarily think in the same way. You and me are very different. Your perspective is different from my perspective. Your viewing of thing is different. Viewing of the society is different than what I view about it, of any problem. Okay, so it increases their willingness and ability to look at the world through the eyes of others. So this this prepares them to live and work in a world that is becoming more and more and more diverse and integrated. So the people who study sociology uh, gain a broad range of knowledge and skills that they can apply in a variety of settings, including the place of work, in the workplace they are working. So I, as a Kavita, is not, as a woman, you know, I am into different kinds of roles I'm playing. I, am, I play different kinds of roles in society. And I try to justify my roles when, you know, given the roles, you know, I'm, a, I'm a teacher, I'm a, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, you know, I, I justify my roles accordingly. So I don't behave uh, the way I behave with my husband with other person in the society. You know? I will be different, you know, differently. And, I, I, I'm, and the kind of values I carry, I well in the sense, you know, the, the kind of, uh, uh, what you can say, uh, abstract guidelines I follow in my society, whether I'm honest, whether I'm good, whether I'm ba bad, do I have, do I, do I follow my professional ethics, do I have my personal ethics, all this plays a very important role in the society. And sociology makes it, you know, sociology prepares students for a wide range of occupations as well. So people with a sociology yes. degree, listen to me, this is a very important point. See, sociology prepares students for a wide range of occupations. So people with a sociology degree are hired by government agencies and corporations. They are into fields of social service. They are into fields of counseling, whether it's a family planning counseling or career counseling or substance abuse counseling, problems related to women, problems related to crime, problems related to children, community planning, health services, marketing, research, human resource, everywhere, you know, you can. You don't think that if I do sociology, where, what is my scope? How I can land up? Where I can land up? You are many, you know, sociology is a subject which is not only so they taught to the sociology students, but it is a subject which is taught to the nursing students, it is a subject which is taught to the physiotherapy students, it is a subject which is taught to the medical students, engineering students, law students, in every field, every subject, every discipline, there is one paper on sociology. In, in fields such as sales, public relations, journalism, law, criminal justice, even a small amount of subject of sociology is being taught to the students, which, you know, which is very, very beneficial, which is, you know, this particular training on sociology is very much beneficial to the students uh, securing various subjects. So Shashat tells us how to become and what we want to be. Okay. What the sociology says, Shashat tells us how to become what we want to be. Okay. It is according to Anthony Giddens, he says that, you know, that how to become what you want to be. So here is it's one of the beautiful sentence given by Anthony Giddens. Okay. So the academic discipline of sociology is the scientific study of society, society and the application of scientific knowledge of human society is in order to progress achieve progress in various fields. So what does sociology do? Sociology investigates why man is a social animal as well as the individual society relationship. It also enhances knowledge of society 
and social relationship. And it also gives a knowledge related to various social institutions and the roles of institution in the functioning of society. Uh, what is the role of the institution? How these institutions play an important role in the functioning of society? And sociology also helps us to address the various social or go through the various social issues such as poverty, family disorganization, unemployment, juvenile delinquency, and many other social problems that are existing in the society. Mm -hmm. And sociological knowledge is required for sociology's understanding and planning. Very importantly, sociological knowledge is very much under required for society's understanding and planning. So social planners and policy makers also make use of sociologists because it also contribute to the enrichment of human culture. Okay, so this is all about the definition of sociology, uh, the nature of sociology and the scope of sociology. So anything you can please ask me now. Thank you, ma'am. Sounds good. Uh, uh, what is the process of uh, requesting for any notes? I know that you gave your number. So should we yeah. just WhatsApp you or, or what? what See, you can contact me. You can call me anything. I can forward it to you personally. You can be in touch with me. Okay. Anyhow, you have it. Your uh, institute, BR Ambedkar Open University is there for you to, for, to help you. But as a teacher of sociology, if you need any guidance, any help from me, I'm always there for you. Sounds good, madam. Thank you so much. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody wants to say anything? Ma'am, when is exam? When is exam? I don't know about the exam. Exam killer, you can consult your uh, what you can say. Uh, uh, I have one quick question. When are Please. we supposed to submit our uh, assignment? I don't know. <laughs> I'll just find out and get back to you in another class. Is that okay? Sounds good. Sounds good. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else wants to say anything? When do we have another class? Oh, Thank you. Uh, I think you will be informed and accordingly I will be taking the class. So I'll be going you uh, going from this uh, unit point of view. Systematic. Okay. Not from your end. Tomorrow it is there, no ma'am. Class. I don't know about tomorrow's class. I may not informed about that. Excuse me. I see there are only three classes that is today, and after that, I don't see any other classes mentioned on the website. Yeah, they haven't mentioned to me as well. So anything I'll be I think they will be sharing it to you. Um so I think uh, they may get the, the I mean the, the coordinators or the administrators may get back to you. I think they can inform you better than me because I am not aware of this because I'm only the concern. My concern is only to take class. So I don't know. I'm so sorry. I'm just pasting a, 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 a picture of the schedule that I got on the website on, okay. on messages. So I think that would help everyone. Yes, yes, absolutely. Hmm? So this is all about social anything. Uh -huh. Please tell me. Ma'am, uh, actually, uh, either na Telegram channel me own ka peti dantlo, uh, like PDF gani ante me notes alant uh, thei na. Is the easy one to ma'am? Certainly. Um, uh, probably I just uh, speak to you in another class of mine so that I can I can plan certain things for you guys and get back to you in the next class. And the prithi allu contact chailam gad ma'am. If anything possible, it is. I think BR Ambedkar Open University is also going to provide you whatever the lecture I've given you now. I think it is recorded. So it will be provided to all the students. Uh, so they will be doing, but because there will be no more, uh, I mean, no, I think only three classes will be there. I don't know how much information will be provided through this uh, lecture. But uh, if anything, such you want the whole material of ours, uh, I just plan with the concerned persons and get back to you in the next class. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. All the best. Take care, students. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Ah, please tell me. Please tell me. Sangeeta. Um, we'll get the uh, previous papers, ma'am. Ah, you will get it in the website probably or you can study centers wherever you are. I think they may provide you. I think so. I don't know exactly, but uh, if uh, if I'm if I, uh, given a chance, if I'm given a chance to take class, another class, uh, I'll try to frame certain questions to you, like 
from the whole syllabus and give it to you like expected questions i can give it to you according you can prepare your answers and prepare for examinations i will download a few model papers i mean i'll i'll download a few previous papers and post it on the whatsapp group for everyone yes internet. you can do that you can do that i think it is better you can start your whatsapp group of yours or first years where you know you can be in touch for another two years as well first first year second and third year this will be a constant group for yours is it not yes sir huh? Precious part, I am not sure. Ma'am, do you have any information about when first sem is going to conduct from the Argo? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, child. I don't know anything about that. Begin there. Okay. Okay. All right, ma'am. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. All the best. I'm. I was a bit fast. I'm so sorry because I wanted to complete some aspects. You know, otherwise, I in fact this paper, I this unit, I'll take and at least three to four classes. but i just very quickly i finished up in one hour i'm so sorry for that but that is the thing i could as i feel that i could use some information related to subject of sociology okay thank you so much yes, thank you thank you thank you thank you ma'am bye bye thank you ma'am bye thank you thank you thank you so much hello guys andar unnara ha okay हेलो गाइस हाउ अंदर अनम्यूट कर दिया अंदर यूट्यूब की ऐड जैसे रो गोनाल ग्रुप की ऐड जैसे रो करने सारे ब्रो ये ना ऊपर ग्रुप हाँ ये ना तो ज्वाइन अप वाली बीए ट्वेंटी टू अरे आगे बात ले अलग ज्वाइन कर रही इंटरनेट ए लमाटर तो सोशियोलॉजी उन्हीं ूपर <laughs> <laughs> पॉलिटिकल <laughs> 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 ग्रुप लो मैडम नंबर आ जाएगी एकदम ग्रुप अभी एकदम लेजेंड जब को हेलो 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 चप्पा का बीए ट्वेंटी टू सोशियल जब आ रखा था 